Hi everyone, my name is Miss Emily and I am one of the TWOS teachers at Garrett Park Nursery School. Today I wanted to do a lesson with you on hanging with hermit crabs. So hermit crabs are pretty interesting. You might not realize that, but they're actually an amazing creature. I don't know if you've ever seen a hermit crab, have you? Well, my daughter Kate is going to help me show a real show hermit. a real hermit crab. So this is one of our hermit crabs. Her name's Juliet. Her name is Juliet. And she's very active hermit crab. Oh, look, she's coming out. You guys actually get to see her. But don't but don't Here do she bad is. stuff to her. Or she will pinch you. But <laughs> Not all hermit crabs pinch. So this is Juliet. And as you can see, she has this beautiful shell. And the this shell helps protect her. Just like how our skin helps protect us. And hermit crabs grow a lot. And as they grow, they get, they find bigger and bigger shells. So Juliet actually was in a smaller shell. And now she has and a bigger shell. And she has, exactly Kate, now she has a bigger shell. And she, I don't know if you could see with when she came out, she also has antennas. She has two antenna. She has lots of legs. You see all those legs? So the front pairs of legs, can you see those right there? They're her pincher legs. And you also, she also has many other pairs of legs, about six total. And the back legs help her walk and they help keep the shell sturdy. Cause this is a heavy shell. You might not believe it, but it's actually a really heavy shell. The, she also has two eyes. Can you see them there? You see she has those big eyes. And she, we already said she has two sets of antenna. And when, it's really interesting when they when the hermit crabs swap out their shells, uh, usually a smaller hermit crab is in line waiting to get the bigger shell that the bigger hermit crab got rid of. They do it in a very orderly fashion, actually. No one gets hurt and everybody gets a new shell. And one of the other things I wanted to let you guys know is when Hermit crabs, like Juliet, she's a pet, so she lives on land. But other hermit crabs are all in the water. So hermit crabs can be in the water or they can be on land. They're two different types of hermit crabs. And when they live on land, like Juliet, they have shells like this, but when they live in the water, in the ocean, I guess I should be more specific. When they live in the ocean, they have barnacles and sea anemones and all kinds of other fun organisms that attach themselves to their shells and they kind of become their friends and it helps them almost decorate their shells. So you guys are really getting to see Julia in action today. She's, she's really active. active today. She's active a lot though. But she mostly sleeps. So we're going to learn a lot more about hermit crabs today. And <laughs> I'm going to put Juliet back in her house, which we will see later. And, and we'll I. Have a crab. To do. And we'll have a craft to do, and I'll read you a book about hermit crabs. 
So I'll be right back and we'll read our book. See you in a minute. Hi everyone, I'm back. I wanted to read the story, A House for Hermit Crab. It's by Eric Carl. You all might know that name. He also wrote The Very Hungry Caterpillar, which is a book we read a lot at Garrett Park Nursery School. So again, it's called A House for Hermit Crab. And this book is about a hermit crab who has outgrown its shell, which is its home. And it's all about his adventures in finding a new shell and what he does with that new shell. So here we go. So here's Hermit Crab. Time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and over the floor of the ocean but it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. So here's Hermit Crab without a shell on the ocean floor. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wiggling and waggling about inside, in to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looked so, well, so plain, thought Hermit Crab. See, it's just very plain, a very plain shell. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you be... Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It is so plain, it needs you. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. There you go, there's the sea anemone. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the sea floor. How handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, signaled a little sea star. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. There it is right there. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. Gingerly, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. So look, he has all these fun things on top of his shell now. In June, Hermit Crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went, picking up algae and, and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hardworking you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. Happily, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. So there it is. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near his shell. So it's right there. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim is it, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, said the sea urchin. In September, Hermit Crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lantern fish, and it swam over near the shell. So he has all these lovely things all around his shell. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. 
Hermit Crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, cheered Hermit Crab. So look, he has this beautiful, all these beautiful things around his shell, which is his home. But in November, Hermit Crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little over the year, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon he would have to find another bigger home, but he had, to but he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They are like a family. How can I ever leave them? In December, a smaller hermit crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? I have outgrown my house too, answered hermit crab. I must move on. You are welcome to live here, but you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. The following January, hermit crab stepped out of the little crab, stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that. Little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain, but sponges, he thought, barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. The end. I'll be back and we can look at the hermit crab's home. See you in a bit. Hi everyone, I'm back and my son Andrew has been helping me film this lesson on hanging out with hermit crabs and we wanted to show you Juliet's house. So this is her house and it actually has a removable lid so we can check on the hermit crabs every day. So Juliet actually has two brothers and um, they're in here too. Right now they're hiding in their cave. But here I wanted to show you guys, we actually have blue sand that I'm making all these marks on right now that's at the bottom of the, of the house. And you can kind of see where they've come out today and made their footprints. And look, they moved all their food around, which they like to do a lot. But I do have to say that our hermit crabs come out a lot more at night than they do during the day. So look at what we have here. So we have the blue sand, which here is what we have. It's just hermit crab sand. It's very soft and it comes in many different colors. We just happen to have the blue one. The next thing we have is a dish for their sponges. And we make sure that the sponges stay really, really wet. And we make sure that they're wet every single day. They're nice and wet. You can even see like they're almost dripping wet. And this is how the hermit crabs get their water. They put their legs onto the sponges and that's how they soak up the water. That's, yep, yeah, that's how they drink. This is their climbing stick because they love to take all of those claws, including their pinchers, and climb and climb and climb. So they like to climb up here and sometimes they'll just be hanging out on the climbing stick. Then this is their little food dish. And what we do is we actually have hermit crab food and you can get this at any pet store, but we just have hermit crab food for them. And it's made up of vitamins and minerals and all the things that they need, but um, we put it in a little dish for them. That's just one of the things that they eat. And then we have their hidden cave here, and I'll hold that open in a minute. But I wanted to show you guys that we have these really cool painted shells that are empty, that are different sizes. So it's just like the book we read. All these shells are empty and ready for the hermit crabs to go into when they grow a little bit. So I usually don't do this, 
I usually let them sleep, but just because I want you guys to see what they look like, here are the three hermit crabs. Oh, oh look, Juliet's actually on the, on the cave. I'll put it back down. So we have, Andrew, do you want to introduce them? We have um, Juliet. Shiny. Shiny. And Camo the second. Camo the second. So these are our hermit crabs. And I'm sorry guys, I don't mean to disturb you. I just wanted everybody to see you guys. Here's Camo. Here's Shiny. And there's Juliet. Look, she's hanging on to the side of the, of the cave. They're having a good time. They are extremely social and they like to be in, they don't like to be alone. So hermit, for hermit crab, hermit kind means to be alone or by yourself. And hermit crabs are kind of just the opposite of their names because they don't like to be alone or by themselves. They like to be in a group or a colony um, if they're living in the wild where they have well over a hundred or more hermit crabs that are living all together. Um, they like to sleep on top of one another. <laughs> so you can have a colony of like a hundred hermit crabs all sleeping on top of each other. And they, when these guys are sleeping, they all like to be on top of one another. Oh look, Shiny's crawling up the, up the cave. They're great climbers, as you can see. And they really, really, really like to be with each other. So their name, Hermit Crab, is somewhat funny. And as you can see, they kind of follow one another and hang out with each other a lot. So I hoped you liked seeing their house. I'll be back in a little bit and we'll do a hermit crab craft. All right, bye. Hey guys, I just wanted to get you back on so you could see that Shiny actually is over at the sponges right now and he's drinking. That's how they drink. So look, Shiny's had a little drink and now he's coming out. Juliet's digging in the, in the sand. And Camo the second is just hanging out trying to go back to sleep. <laughs> so we just wanted to show that to you really fast because you don't always get to see them drink. That's kind of unusual. All right, we'll be back and ready to do a craft in just a minute. Bye. Everyone. We're back and my daughter Kate and I are here to do a hermit crab craft. So what we did is we, we were lucky enough to have some shells around the house already, but if you don't, feel free to grab some shells when you're at the beach or playing at the lake or maybe even going camping with mommy and daddy. And these are just some of the plain shells that we found and we washed them and got them as clean as we could. And as you can see, Kate started painting hers and decorating hers. So it kind of looks like the one in the hermit crab book that we just read that she's putting decorations on. So it's like the sea anemone and the barnacles and all the fun, the starfish and all the fun things that the hermit crab added to, added to his shell. And pufferfish, if you can't tell here. Right, she put a little pufferfish. And I'm gonna put a crab, like a crab. And my son Andrew pre-painted some shells earlier, and this is, these are some of the designs that he came up with. 
seaweed on the bottom of the ocean and ocean. Yep, exactly. So these were just white shells, just like this, that he painted. And so, some of them have like stripes like mine, but we decorated them. We decorated them. My mom, my mom still has to stop painting holes, but so I will be decorating inside my shell when she does that. Right, so I'm gonna be working on decorating this while I talk to you guys a little bit more about hermit crabs. But as Kate was saying, the hermit crab in our story he thought his shell was very plain. So we're trying to take shells that look like hermit crab shells and make them fancy and decorate them so they're not so plain. So another thing I wanted to talk about with hermit crabs while we're decorating and painting are hermit crabs are actually something called omnivorous. And that's a really big word. But omnivorous means that hermit crabs actually eat meat and they eat plants. So they are pretty amazing that way because they eat both. And some of the things that they, that they like to eat are tiny shrimp and fish and seaweed but as a treat you might find this really interesting as a treat hermit crabs like to eat honey and sunflower petals so the petals of a sunflower and get this they also like to eat peanut butter so that's not something they like to eat as their main diet but that's something that they like to eat as a treat. So when we like to eat as a treat, say ice cream, the hermit crabs like to eat, like to eat peanut butter. Some people might like but peanut butter. Well, yes, but I was gonna say, it's kind of fun as a hermit crab to give them peanut butter. Yeah, they and, can lick off the spoon. <laughs> And some fun facts are hermit crabs actually use gills to breathe, whether they are a hermit crab that lives in the ocean or whether they're a hermit crab that lives on land, like our Juliet and our Shiny and our Camo the second that you got to meet when we showed you their home. And they also are what you call crustaceans. So they're actually related to other animals that you might recognize, things like crabs and lobsters and shrimp. And the funny thing is, we talked about this earlier, are hermit crabs, hermit kind of means, as we said before, being alone. And hermit crabs are just the opposite. They don't like to be alone. They like to be with other hermit crabs. That's one of the reasons why we have three hermit crabs together. In one cage. In one, in one house, right? Because they love to be together. Exactly. But they, so that's kind of funny because hermit means be alone and they really don't like to be alone. And you would think that they would be crab-like because they're called hermit crabs, but they're really more lobster-like than <laughs> crab-like. So their name is kind of funny all around because they're, they're kind of opposite of their, of their name, but for whatever reason, it's stuck. And so they're known as hermit crabs. But you can always name it a different thing. Right. So you don't remember the name oh, Hermit Crab. Well, that's why we named them different names, right? Yeah. We named everyone them, gave them can, names. Everyone so, can name So as you can see, I'm just painting my shell, making it a, diff a pretty color pink here. A light pink with white. And Kate is decorating her shell and putting all kinds of designs in there to represent the sea anemone and the crustaceans and the... Um, all the barnacles and things and Andrew's showing you all around his 
all around his um, his shell. Which he's supposed to be filming. And remember, what we talked about earlier, and what you saw in the book as well, is these shells are there for the hermit crab's protection. So these shells actually protect them and keep them safe while they they're It does not harm the hermit around. crabs. They no. don't harm the hermit crabs. It helps them for, from it being protected. Right, helps them so be when protected. A, so when there's like a sea enemy, which they don't like, and they fight the hermit crabs, he, they can hide under their shell. Well, the sea and enemy are kind of their friends. But, but if not. if they if if they if there was something in the ocean that that wasn't their friend, like a shark. Yeah, like a shark. Then the shell would protect them and keep them safe. So. What I'd like you guys to do, or feel free to do, is all I did was I just, we just took a bunch of paint and we're kind of mixing it together and painting the shells. And we have a plate. We also put some, the kids put some markers on there. I did. I and did we just have a plate full of all kinds of fun, crafty things that you can glue onto your shell and to I'm make your done craft. With my shell. Oh wow! So Kate's done with her shell. I think I'm gonna put this right here. And I and have a S to say C. Well, C and Emily. Nice, nice. I'm gonna put so, my shell over here to dry because he's like. And she's just filming some of the shells. Some of the shells and, and some I'm of the supplies. And I'm gonna help my mom if she wants help. So, I think you guys will have fun making this craft. And if you don't have a shell handy, because I know you might not have a seashell handy, feel free just to decorate a plate or a piece of paper and do a drawing. You don't have to decorate a shell, but we just wanted you to see what it would look like if you did. All right, hope you enjoy your craft. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone. I just wanted to say goodbye and Juliet wanted to say goodbye. It's been it's been fun. Oh look, our dog Tootsie's here too. She likes the hermit crabs as well. You say hi Toots. <laughs> yes, we have a lot of animals at our house. Um, but Juliet and I just wanted to say bye. It's been really fun hanging out with you, learning all about hermit crabs. So we hope you enjoyed learning about hermit crabs today. We hope you enjoyed learning about their homes and reading a story and doing a craft. And our other twos teacher from Garrett Park Nursery School, Miss Meadow, will be doing a video in a, in a few weeks and we look forward to seeing that. So hope everybody's doing well. See you soon, bye.